All right, hello and welcome. I'm the Kodiak, and today I'm here to talk about Sean Payton and the Broncos. But before I do, subscribe if you like the video, and hopefully at the end I'll have earned it. Now, I'm a Broncos fan, and I just want to show off this. This is my little good luck charm that uh, a very special person gave me. But uh, yeah, I just thought I'd show that to you. But um, when we hired Sean Payton back in January 2023, I wasn't really sure what to expect from him because he does not have as much of a pedigree you know, without Breeze, but he dragged the 2021 Saints, who were led by a QB tandem of Jameis Winston and Taysom Hill, to almost a playoff spot before the 49ers turned it up in crunch time. But uh, I was, you know, lukewarm on this hire. I really didn't want him when the list of candidates was revealed, just because I knew there were a lot of issues, you know, with how, you know, supposedly he had jumped ship from the Saints uh, as soon as they started to become, you know, mid. And, you know, there's still a lot of stuff out there in the past regarding Sean Payton and his suspicious ties uh, to Bounty Gate and a bunch of stuff uh, when he was the head coach of the Saints. But if there's one thing I have learned, uh, it's that he knows how to coach a team. <laughs> and after Nathaniel Hackett, it really couldn't get much worse. Uh, this team has had a massive cultural problem over the last few years. They have by far the most one-score losses in the league since 2017. I believe they have, wait, let me check. Uh, I don't know. It's something ridiculous. Like they have 15 one score losses within the past three years, which is like four more than any other team. Um, but this feels like the 2021 Dan Campbell Lions, where they are going to make you earn every single win. And for the most part, they have done that every game besides the Miami game and the Kansas City Thursday night game this year has been an extremely hard fought contest. And it's one that previous Broncos regimes and it would end up losing. Like, straight up, uh, Nathaniel Hackett doesn't win these hard-fought games. Vic Fangio, I mean, they won a few, but those were few and far between. Um, Vance Joseph, when he was the head coach, forget about it. Uh, but, yeah, this team still is not talented. That's kind of what happens when you go all-in for a quarterback and swing for the fences. You lose valuable draft capital to improve your team at a certain point. And better teams would make teams pay after winning 12-0 to in the turnover department over the past three games, uh, even though it's gone down to the wire with Buffalo and Minnesota. And they are not going to continue to dominate the turnover battle like that. I know that the defense has stepped up and the turnovers are quote-unquote contagious, as Sean Payton says, but uh, you're not going to win the turnover margin that drastic uh, going forward. That said, Pretty cool story that they've been able to have the defensive turnaround that they've had. But regarding personnel changes, Vance Joseph has done a heck of a job. Uh, the emergence of Jaquan McMillian has been absolutely huge for the team. Uh, Moreau instead of Mathis at the CB2 spot. That's been exceptional. Mims has been the best punt returner in the league this year and was a big reason why they always seemed to be in plus territory when they were starting out drives uh, last Monday against Buffalo. And getting rid of veterans like Gregory slash Clark seemed to be addition by subtraction. Uh, and let me just say this. So believe it or not, I have been around the Broncos quite a bit over the past few years. Uh, not personally, like I don't hang out with any of them or anything like that. But uh, I worked at a steakhouse. So I live in Vegas now, but I moved away from Denver in May, uh, this past May. And I used to work at a steakhouse where the Broncos would always come in. And what stuck out to me was even during the losing times, this team always seemed very, very close. It just didn't translate to wins on the field. And now it does. Uh, actually, at the beginning of last year, I remember I would see, you know, I'm talking 2022, the offense would come in, the defense would come in. But when the season started, the defense would only come in and they'd be balling out. And I don't know, it was always fun to hear about the dirt going on within the team. But um. Yeah, that really didn't translate to wins. You know, even though the culture seemed to be good, the product on the field didn't reflect it. Well, now it does. Now it does. And this team, honestly, is not as talented as, you know, some of the Broncos teams over the past few years, in my opinion. Uh, but they always play for each other. And, you know, the past, they still have issues. They haven't been able to bring down a lot of quarterbacks. And the front seven play has still been very inconsistent. But Browning, Benito, and Cooper have all showed flashes at the edge spot. And I haven't even talked about this guy yet. Um, Russ, he is not cooking whatsoever. I don't want to like get that twisted at all. 
90% of the time, the offense looks wildly pedestrian. Um, but they always just do enough at the end of games. Still nowhere close to where they want them to be. And the wide receiver play is inconsistent. But Sutton has made some awesome catches. Um, still waiting for Judy to kind of, you know, step up like he did at the end of last year, at, at least at the very end of last year. Um, because I know he can, but remember, he was hurt uh, going into this season. But I don't know. Uh, Sean Payton's scheme is also O-line wizardry. They didn't play very well against Minnesota this night, like tonight or last night. Um, and Minnesota, I know they had that really, really exotic package they ran all game, but they were figuring out how to beat it as the game went on. And the one thing I was excited about seeing from Sean Payton's regime was real player development. We've had so many different coaching staffs over the years, and they weren't good coaches either. Fangio was all right, but he's just not head coach material. But we never really saw a lot of these guys develop as players. Uh, but, you know, when you get guys like McMillan, when you get guys who are turning into good players like Mims, you know, Moss and Sanders are taking steps up as the season goes along. That's just great. And I don't know if that would have happened under a different regime. But... All these close games they're winning, you know, Chicago, Buffalo, Minnesota, Green Bay, these are all old games that they wouldn't have won. And this makes me excited as a Broncos fan because no longer is anyone excited about the fact that they have to play against the Denver Broncos, which, you know, it pains me to say, but over the past few years, they, I don't remember a time a team ever went into a game and was like, dang, we got to play against Denver. I know coming into Empower Field is always tough. And that's what drove me nuts is that we didn't make it hard on other teams when they came into Denver, even though we have such a great home field advantage with the altitude. And I've been to quite a few of those games. I know it gets really loud there. I know that it affects the opposing offense somewhat, you know, when the whole stadium's shaking. Um, but we never really made the opposing team pay for mistakes. And now they have been. Now we're not like putting our foot on the gas. We're not putting our throat our foot on their throats like I know the Broncos can because like I said the offense has looked wildly pedestrian at times this year but beating Casey and Buffalo back to back were huge boosts but everything is making a difference and it starts with the ownership uh, and Sean Payton himself which is who this video is about this team didn't have an owner and I think the idea of culture in sports is wildly wildly overrated exceptionally overrated because it's more of a week-to-week -week sort of thing when you think about it. But this is how you rebuild culture. Sean Payton, most games lost due to injury since 2017. Most man games lost, that is, uh, is Denver. Sean Payton hires a new person to oversee the strength and conditioning department. They're going to build a new statue, um, not statue, what am I saying? A state-of-the-art training facility. And I've been to the one in Dub Valley. It's very nice. It's really nice, but... You know, the Walton Penner group seems committed into investing into this team and hopefully turning it into a winning product on the field. Uh, replacing the field, even though, you know, some games have looked lost uh, last year. I know they did that. Uh, pretty cool gesture by the ownership to make sure uh, guys are playing on safe surfaces. And this is stuff that you just... If I had thought about it, Going back a few years, I would have never expected this team to be in this state right now because this team literally did not have an owner uh, not that long ago. And now they're talking about, you know, building new training facilities. And it all begins with the work that Sean Payton, George Payton, and the Walton Penner family have done. Um, it's great. And when you have a team that has been snake bit over the past few years for just a number of things. You know, Hackett was a low point for this franchise. It truly was. But you know what? We're getting through that, and I'm just very excited that there's a new era of Broncos football that we can all bask in, and I cannot wait to see what Sean Payton turns this team into.